Hey, Coffee with Brenna friends, grab your beverage and grab your Bible because it's time for Coffee with Brenna. Great to be here with you today. Today we are asking the question, who am I taking with me? Who are you taking with you? I hope by the end you'll be asking yourself that question. And this requires a little bit of backstory. If you've been watching Coffee with Brenna for a while, you know in the fall I was traveling around a lot, talking to people about the ministry, until I got COVID-19. <laughs> and then I had to cancel a lot of speaking engagements. But I am back on the road again. Well, some stuff is virtual, but back on the virtual road again. Last week I had three speaking engagements over the course of four days. And on Sunday I spoke at a church and I saw an old friend and he and I were talking about a mutual friend. She, he introduced me to her, and I had lost touch with her. In fact, I, when I got home, I looked at my text messages, and the last time she replied to a text was almost two years ago. And I really just started thinking. I wrote this book several years ago called Learning to Walk in Freedom. And when I was a little Christian, I was five years old in Jesus, I just felt like there must be more than this. And that started a journey for me. Now it's called Learning to Walk in Freedom on Journey in Five Steps. But it was a journey that took years before I even started writing about the topic of freedom. But I knew that Jesus died to give me freedom and you freedom. And that what I saw in a lot of the church was people who were not free, people who were bound, people who were stuck in negative thought patterns, people who had crippling, life-controlling issues, like me. I can fall into that category. I could fall into that category. My issues were not as visible to the outside world, but depression, anxiety, low self-esteem or whatever you want to call it. Sometimes people in the church don't like the term self-esteem. But I was not free. And so I embarked on this journey, a journey I share with you in a book. And if you don't have a copy, please get one. The link will be in the show notes. And I will always, always, always send you the PDF for free if you want it, if you need it, and you can't afford to buy a book. And so driving home from this church, it's supposed to be like a 35, 40 minute drive. I went the wrong way on the highway. <laughs> so it was even longer than that for me. And I was trying to listen to a book and I just felt compelled to put on worship music and just pray and cry out to the Lord. And I literally cried out to the Lord while driving. Not so badly that I needed to stop, but just, oh Lord, I am burdened for, for folks who are not free. I am burdened for those who have not even heard about Jesus. I am burdened for the brokenness I see in my own life and in the lives of people who are trying to follow you. Oh, Lord. And I just started thinking of this question, who am I taking with me? Who am I taking with me? And I don't just mean to heaven. So that's good, too. I mean, on this journey of faith, who am I taking with me? Who am I encouraging? Who am I grabbing by the hand and saying, you can do it. You can make it through another minute, another hour, another day, another mile of this journey. Who am I taking with me? I may have mentioned here before that my life verse is Psalm 34, verse 10. Now, if you haven't heard of a life verse Maybe I need to do a separate video on that, but I picked this verse many years ago because it just kept showing up in my life. It just kept showing up in my life. And it is, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Psalm 34, verse 10. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And I have not only trust in scripture that that is true, but I have seen it to be true in my life. And a couple of years ago, maybe not even that long, I felt like God spoke to me and said, Brenna, you not only have 
a life verse, but you have a calling verse. And my calling verse is Isaiah 61. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read it here in my living Bible. Now, these are the verses that when Jesus walked into the temple, the beginning of his ministry, he opened the scroll and read these verses. And of course, he was talking about himself. But this is a passage that is also true for you and me. It's not just true for Jesus. It's true for us as born-again believers and followers of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the suffering and afflicted. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to announce liberty to captives and to open the eyes of the blind. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of God's favor to them has come and the day of his wrath to their enemies to all who mourn in Israel, he will give beauty for ashes, joy instead of mourning, praise instead of heaviness. For the Lord has planted them like strong and graceful oaks for his glory. And I really like it in the, um, in the NIV 1984. And this is the first Bible I bought for myself after I became a believer. And, uh, it's all like, I'm going to put a picture in there for you. It's all, I used to use these gel glitter pens to underline it. And this part is underlined. At the end, it says, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So something the Lord has planted for the display of his splendor. You know why I picked out this Bible? Because when I knew one, what I would call hardcore Christian in high school, and she had this Bible. So when I became a believer and I went to purchase a Bible, I saw this at the Bible store and I said, oh, that's a real Christian's Bible. And so I bought it. And obviously it's well loved. Uh, back when I became a believer in 1999, um, it was all the rage to carry around your Bible in these little Bible holders. And your front and back cover would like slip into, it looked, it's kind of, it was cloth, but it kind of reminds me of the paper book covers you would make in school and um, basically tore the binding to shreds in addition to the fact that obviously I read this book a lot. Uh, so this is my calling verse. My calling is to, and your calling, because this sounds a lot like the Great Commission in Matthew 28 where he tells us to go preach the gospel, but it's a little more specific, right? We have good news to give to the poor. We have been sent to bind up the brokenhearted. We have been sent to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. We have sent, been sent to tell people that they can have a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So who am I taking with me? Who are you taking with you? Who can you encourage today who can you share truth with today? Who can you be Jesus for today? Who can you share the gospel with today? I was so impacted by this conversation. Um, and this friend I had lost touch with. So I decided texting obviously wasn't working. So I tried to call her. Actually, I felt really strongly I was supposed to do it before I recorded this video. And it was weird because the phone didn't even ring. I tried it twice. And so then I looked her up on Facebook. We were not Facebook friends previously. Um, maybe she didn't have a profile. I'm not sure. And I was able to connect with her on Facebook. And I was just so thrilled. And I want to say something else. Not every friendship is easy. If I mean, I work in a ministry where I'm constantly encouraging people to surrender their struggles and their brokenness to Jesus Christ. But people are messy. And if you try and encourage people, they will make mistakes. They will fall. They may be resistant. We need to be spirit led in what we say and what we do and how we pray. But let me tell you, I'm, I'm positive every single person 
watching this video has had a time when they really needed encouragement. You have had a time when you really needed encouragement and someone came along and encouraged you. Who can you encourage today? Who are you taking with you on this journey of faith? Who are you taking with you to heaven? Lord Jesus, maybe this message was just for me, but I don't think so. I posted just a short thing when I got home from church on Facebook and I got a lot of amens. God, what role do you want me to have in binding up the brokenhearted? What role do you want me to have in proclaiming freedom for the captives? What role do you want me to have in who I might be able to take with me on this journey toward heaven? Thank you, Jesus, for your example that you came to show us how to live, that you came to show us how to love, that you came to show us how to learn, you came to show us how to lead, you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly till it overflows. Holy Spirit, convict us of our complacency and our indifference towards other people struggling, whether they're struggling because they don't know you, Jesus, or they do know you, but they haven't been shown the way of freedom. They haven't been discipled. They haven't been reminded that we are no longer slaves of sin, but we are slaves of righteousness. Oh, Jesus, let myself and everyone watching this video Surrender once again and say, Lord, I am your vessel. Let my eyes be open to how you might want to use me today to encourage someone. I pray that right now, God, how might I encourage someone today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. Help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, friends. I love your comments. I love to hear how these videos are impacting you. And I want to humbly ask that you would pray for me too. God would give me continued direction. On, on these videos and encouraging you. And until next time, thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.